just for out of courtesy because some people still have manners and respect and, and will refrain themselves where you're physically in the presence of someone that you wouldn't normally say, you know, that, that, um, that you shouldn't say. But nowadays when you're not in the presence with the people, it's a lot easier to say. Even in the Bible, we had that happening when the Apostle Paul was talking about, hey, you know, there's these guys among you that are saying, dude, basically talking all this trash, and I'm totally paraphrasing, this is like the message version, right? Where they're talking a bunch of trash about me, and we'll see, you know, how, how hard their talk is when I, when I show up. You know, their, their words are weighty and real powerful, you know, and they're saying this about Paul. Yeah, when he's out there, he could talk real tough and stuff. Well, we'll see how he is when he shows up. And he's like, yeah, you will see how it is when I show up. Right? Because that's the way people are, you know. They like to, to backbite and, and rail and, and talk the big game when the people aren't there. But then when they actually are face to face, they don't say as much. And that's, that's the same principle that I'm applying here to, with, with, that happens online all the time, where people wouldn't normally say this stuff in someone's presence. But it's a lot easier to say it online. So we need to be purpose. Everyone needs to be purpose. Because look, this is something that's easy to fall into. I mean, just think about gossip. Just talking about stuff that's not your business, talking what well, you know, well, this person did this thing and that person did that thing and, and all the juicy news and all this stuff that look, if it's not good for the use of edifying, if, it's not, if there's none of your business, if there's no point to it, if it's just completely vain, you know, that's gossip. Amen. Now, sometimes it's important to understand if someone has done wrong to some, you know, like there's, there's definitely a lot of situations where that may be possible, but Let's not get caught up in just talking about what everyone else is getting into and doing and stuff. Look, it's none of your business. It doesn't matter to you, right? If it doesn't matter to you, then, then don't go uh, running your mouth about people. Verse, uh, Psalm 39.1 continues there when he says, I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. And that's the second part of this. You know, we need to just make sure we don't sin with our tongue. But even on top of that, then, we need to make sure that we're keeping our mouth under control while the wicked is before me. You know, not only do we just not want to sin against God or sin against some other people, right? Because that's bad enough as it is just getting involved in sin. But when the wicked's before us, they're going to take what we say and use that against us. So when we get involved in sin and, and slander and gossip and tailbearing and all this other stuff, and the enemy hears that and the wicked hears that, they're going to be like, oh, I thought you were Mr. Christian. I thought, you know, and whatever it is, whether, you know, you're using language as an approach, you know, whatever, whatever it is, people are going to use that against you because they're scrutinizing you. And that's why you need to, to keep your mouth like with a bridle. And the bridle's talking about, you know, you put bits in the horse's mouths. And turn if you, know, turn if you would to James chapter 3 anyways. Let's just go there. You have to put these things in animals' mouths because you're trying to control them and, it, and, it's, and it's not allowing them to do certain things. It's like, you know, putting a gag on someone, right? <laughs> because that's practically what we need to do. Now, obviously, we need to talk, but, you know, this is using language to be able to, to control that. So while the wicked is before me, we need to make sure... And, and, and dead make sure that we're not going to get involved in just saying a bunch of stupid things. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 19, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. In the multitude of words, there wanteth, wanteth means there doesn't lack. So the more, and just be sure of this, the more that you just talk and 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 talk, and talk, and talk the more likely there is that you're going to say something sinful. It's, it's the way it is. That's what the, that's what the Proverbs is teaching there. And the multitude of words are wanting not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Amen. And we live in a day today, in a culture today, where everybody needs to give their opinion. Everyone needs to tell you, right? Did you hear about this? And it's this gossip mentality, and it's gone crazy. And, it, and again, I'm, I'm thinking this is what happens online all the time. Yeah. Where people just... Oh, did you see this happen? It's all the comments. It's just comment, 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 comment. Like, no one cares. That's right. <laughs> really. Nobody would care of the other gossipers. By and large. I mean, look, I'm not saying it's wicked or wrong to make a comment on a post or a video or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. But you know what I'm talking about, that there's people that just... I'll tell you what, that one comment may not be a sin... But the people are just commenting, 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 commenting all the time. Multitude of words are wanted not sin. 
That's what I'm saying. Okay, so the wise thing to do, smart thing to do, show some restraint. You don't need to always give your opinion on everything Amen. all the time and just comment on everything. 